Hey, Carl, great episode, your, your latest one where we talked. I thought that interview turned out really well. Thank you for inviting me on. I really appreciate it. I, for one, have missed you on the air. I hope you get back on the air. Although the favorite things you do are when you do your philosoph- your gamer philosophy things. The recaps are fun, and hearing unboxings is fun. But I really like to hear you you give your thoughts and talk about things. And I know that's peppered in there, which is the thing. People hear, oh, recaps. But actually, inside those recaps, you give thoughts on the gaming system and strategy and tactics. And and the same thing with the unboxings, because you talk about the things in there. So all that gaming philosophy is peppered in with those other segments. But I, I, I do like it more concentrated. Um, but all in all, I have missed you. I, I really do. I think we had a good conversation. I'm going to be pushing it on my podcast, letting people know you're back. And um, keep up the great work. Take care of yourself. And I look forward to seeing you at the gaming table soon. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Geomologist Presents. That was Jason Connerly at the top of the show wishing me a welcome back. I don't know if you've been able to hear our conversation. It's really good. We just kind of freeform. We we had we didn't really have an agenda. We just wanted to talk about stuff. I just felt like I wanted to bounce some ideas off of him and kind of talk about you know what I've been doing for a month. And it turned out really neat. We do talk about um, sort of escalation in in D and D. Right? Is it worth it to add all these other things? Bells and whistles, more hit points. Um, does it take away from the game? Does it add to the game? Um, that was a really good conversation there. I think in this episode, I'm just going to give, you know, talk about, and the big question is, are can you have too many random encounters, right? So so I talk about uh, the, the party, you know, did their, like, mission quest in uh, uh, the city, the b- blown up, burned out city where they found the Black Magot, Madonna, and now they're on their way back. And we've had one, two, like now three random encounters on the road. Maybe there might've been another one too, but they, it was like a, like a, not a combat encounter. But um, is it is that too many? What do you think? I mean, it is, I feel like Twilight 2000 has this kind of old school exploration survival feel. There's a lot of random encounters and tables, even in the initial one and the new one, they've recapitulated that. We're using the new rule set but I'm, we're using the new rule set, but I'm using the old products because I have them and they're awesome products. Um, and, um, and yeah, a, and a lot of the products, they have like an adventure, but a lot of it is exploration. And here is the region around the adventure and go for it. And that's kind of even the way the Free City of Krakow was. Here is the, the here are all the factions. Here's what's at play. There could be an adventure in here if you want, but go for it. So I, I think, you know, um, yeah, it's a neat game and it does have that sort of old school feel about it, uh, that it's very emergent storytelling. And sure, there are adventures and adventure hooks, but the players can or cannot take them. A lot of the, a lot of time has been spent dealing, you know, doing faction play in Krakow as opposed to following an adventure or a lead. So, um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. So that's the question. I mean, are, too, are there too many random encounters? We had another one, and I go into a little more detail about that one. It went really well for the player characters, um, but we'll see. We'll see how things go. Um, it's kind of interesting that they've accumulated a lot of strays, including you know one person they call just Saint Florian. They don't really don't know him, but all the uh, they they actually saved the guy that attacked them and tried to kill them in the catacombs, you know, underneath the. Uh, Sherzno, Sherzno, Sherznov, where they found the Black Madonna. So um, I can't pronounce that city. It's like C-H-N-E-R-A-N-Z-W-V ending in a V. Something like that. Chernov. I used to be able to pronounce it, but it's been a month. Anyway, uh, yeah. So uh, let me know what you guys think. Is, uh, are there, is When do you get to too many random encounters? And um, I mean, not all random encounters have to be like a combat, and that is true, but it just seems, you know, when the players decide, well, we don't want to 
really deal with these people. We don't want to be extorted. I guess that's what happens. Anyway, uh, on to the recap. <laughs> Hey everyone, I finally got to run a session of something. I've been, you know, sometimes Monday's hard and even though I come back from a trip the previous week, it, it's been a challenge to want to run on a Monday. So unfortunately our hostile uh, kind of think aliens verse with using traveler rules or traveler's light type rules. I think it's actually using the Cepheus uh, engine. Um, anyway. I haven't been able to play that, but we finally got to play and get on with our Twilight 2000 game. And I guess the question is, are these guys ever going to make it back to Krakow? So they successfully went to uh, Cherznov and have recovered the Black Madonna. Uh, they had an encounter with a really large, uh, what looked like a large Soviet force, um, remnants of a Soviet force, and kind of small exchange of fire and then um they took off because they didn't want to encounter there's a really large like like company sized force of uh of troops um, and, and it looked like the soviet group had just suffered casualties in a battle a lot of them were injured and maybe the group could have taken them on but they decided no it's a lot of people there was a they did have some heavy weapons and they did take out like a, a mortar that could have damaged their vehicles um, I think the sniper took out the mortar and and I think uh, they fired down the line at some of the machine guns um, that they spotted in the group and I think Ronson took someone out uh, with machine guns um, what's interesting though uh, they continued on uh, they, they wanted they kind of took off they continued on we did kind of a, a modified or a little bit of a chase mechanic really uh, and I kind of had an idea of what where the characters had to get before they were out of line of fire. Um, there was some fire, um, but ineffective because they were so far, you know, so the distance was so great. I think the distance encounter was like 400, 500 meters or so, or maybe between 300 and 400 meters, uh, which was pretty ineffective for small arms. And, and they really had some um, large caliber weapons that could have maybe affected some of the players, but those were taken care of. Um, by sniper fire and, and 50 cal fire from the M113. Anyway, they continued onward, and then they ran into this ambush. Well, they spotted an ambush, or actually they spotted a, a, a roadblock ahead, and uh, the players kind of saw it, but saw, that, saw it without being seen, and some players snuck, up, snuck off to, to kind of get around the barricade and then some players that kind of were in communication uh they were able to find the radio frequency that this blockade was using and it turned out there were also um parts of a, a soviet divi tank division that had been broken up that they knew this already and they're kind of marauders by this time but they were trying to set up a blockade and they had a btr uh 70 you know um another you know, kind of APC, armored APC type vehicle to, you know, to kind of promote this roadblock. At some point, uh, well, so the, the guys who were sneaking around, they found some people and were able to kill them quietly because um, they're not going to pay, the group is not going to pay a toll to cross the road. And then they were, they spoofed and found the, spoofed the group enough that they told them that they were coming from a different direction and they turned around and at that point, then they move forward and fire, open fire with a 50 cal, which you know, which actually penetrated uh, the BTR and caused a cook off of the ammunition, which was cinematic. Probably couldn't really happen, but in real life, I don't know. But uh, cinematic and fun. Um, so that's what ha that's what happened based on the random rolls of the rules and vehicle combat and all that kind of stuff. So they defeated this um, this blockade. That was the previous session. This was way back before I took a month off or so, it seems like from, we hadn't played in a month. And um, so they, they were able to recover the BTR. They had a couple prisoners. Uh, they, it turns out they're ninth, ninth Tank Division Marauders, but they're both were Ukrainian. And they learned that this Tank Divisions kind of has a lot of Ukrainians, uh, which as an anecdote, um, 
Ukrainians value and um, hold hold the Black Madonna in high regard. Which was an anecdote. I let the players know that um, they didn't do anything with it. They have the Black Madonna painting rolled up and hidden somewhere among their stuff, probably in the most heavily armored vehicle in the most heavily ar armored trunk. Anyway, so we continue um, on, and I rolled another encounter, and this time it was the scouts. I had them roll randomly to see if it would, it would be nice if it were Polish Ormo from Krakow, but it wasn't. It was more Marauders. So again, you know, we, we rolled to see if with the encounter distances, and then I, so I'm giving you a little bit of the procedural, which is kind of cool. I roll the encounter distance, and then I, we roll recon for both sides. The players succeed. The bad guys do not, so they don't see them. So the players get to the side of the road and uh, set up an ambush. Um, I think they were going to maybe want to talk to them initially, but they saw that they were marauders. And Jonesy, who is a German spy type, he's kind of he's on his motorcycle and he's up ahead. He puts his motorcycle behind some. You know, I used like a really cool road map. Um, that uh, was provided in the Twilight 2000 box set. Well, I, I have the PDF, so I put it on the on our Roll20. And it, it was actually pretty quick to put up the VTT. I think I was going to do Theater of the Mind, but it seemed more logical uh, to do it, you know, on the on the game board. People, some people are more visually, in my group, are more visually inclined, and they like to see what's going on and have a more, you know, have a tactical sense uh, about things. So... So it's pretty interesting that uh, they set up this ambush. Um, it turns out, so three of the scouts' uh, vehicles is like, it's effectively two, like, uh, four vehicles, uh, UAZ, open top UAZs, um, converted open top UAZs, and a couple pickup trucks. Two of them had like uh, machine guns on them, like the, the, the kind of technical uh, convert, conversion pickup that the group had already or had captured earlier. Probably from the safe marauder group, really. Maybe I don't know. There's a lot of, there's like, the biggest like the, one of the biggest Soviet divisions, the ninth uh, Soviet division was was broken up, and a lot of them have deserted, and uh, there are marauders in the area and stuff. So anyway, um, so uh, the the ambush. So some guys get to like some high ground that's on the map, and one of the scout vehicles can't go in a certain direction so it kind of goes around the back so there's three scout vehicles and the first thing that happens is Jonesy uh, played by my friend who is notorious for using grenades and throwing them and blowing them up at inopportune times actually did a solid and threw the grenade like right into the lap of one of the gunners on the backs of the trucks as it was kind of passing by his position blew him up um just, uh, you know, when we rolled on, we did enough hits to to take him out, and then we roll on the um, hit location. Well, hit location doesn't matter for grenades, it's body. But then we roll on the um, the critical hit table because there's enough hits to do a critical, and it killed him instantly. Um, and then he, he hurt the driver, hurt the vehicle. Um, well, the, the vehicle had a, developed a fuel leak, so the driver bailed out, and then, um, yeah, all hell kind of broke loose. Uh, Ronson, you know, had a line of fire and he fired the 50 cal at the a couple other vehicles from, you know, from his uh, his vantage point. Uh, Tops is a, a seal sniper. Seal sniper um, took out another couple of people. I think hit the driver and had him bail out. It was it was a big mess for the Marauders effectively. And then the other the lone vehicle that kind of went around the side uh, to to the uh, characters were in position, uh, grunts and turn off, and they were able to take out the gunner and then shoot. What was it? Uh, actually, a uh, turn off shot the uh, driver through the heart with the crossbow bolt as he was passing by. Great shot. Uh, vehicle crash, flips over, all that kind of stuff. Um, so they take him out uh, with no casualties to their side. T take a couple prisoners. Uh, they one, I think, Chernoff decides to kill because he was untrustworthy and didn't surrender when given the chance. The other one, um, one guy who's kind of he kind of dies, bleeds out before uh, Amy's character Kasha can come and treat him, but she's able to stabilize another one. Um, so they have a yet another prisoner. They're collecting all these, and there was a there's a funny there was a conversation earlier in the in the in the game. Where one of the players said, "No more pets, Kasha. No, no more strays." Actually, she said, "No more strays," 
and Kasha's like, I'm not taking this tray. This one is not mine. So it was, it was pretty funny. But uh, then they were able to, they said, well, we've got a camp. We have all these vehicles to examine. So they're able to salvage parts from the vehicles, you know, pull them to the side, salvage parts from the vehicles, uh, take the machine guns. One was good. One was kind of messed up. So they were able to at least salvage the ammo and take all the guns from the Marauders and, and uh, get some, some new stuff. So that was pretty cool. That's where we stopped. So them camping, hopefully, I mean, they were about two hours out from Krakow. So hopefully, maybe not even that. Um, if they drive on the road, but it just, you know, what did they encounter on the road? Uh, the next couple towns along the road, uh, one is one is uh, neutral and one is friendly, so we'll see how far they go. But uh, that's that's kind of what happened in our Twilight 2000, the last couple sessions, and uh, it's a really good game. We've been going over a year. I think we're going to move into, oh, and I was very excited to get the uh, Urban Operations uh, pre-order was out for free league for the Twilight 2000, the fourth edition. I'm really enjoying this edition. It's, you know, it's, uh, it, combat flows really fast. It's very quick. It's deadly. I mean, even the vehicle stuff, there's a procedural to it. So it's kind of helpful if we get into more, I mean, it's, it's tense, right? Because if the players get, fi well, actually one player did get fired upon, but it was, you know, ineffective, unfortunately for the player. Um, someone fired on Ronson as he was shooting, but the small arms won't do anything to the APC, but they could have hit Ronson behind the little, you know, the gun there. Although the gun has like a, you know, metal plate as a protection. But anyway, the shot was in effect, shots were ineffective, um, generally speaking. So I just rolled poorly. I, what can I say? I can't help it. Um, even a guy who like opened fire on Jonesy, full auto, um, just didn't do anything to him. So um, while it like hit the rocks around him, it didn't even cause him to have to, dive for cover or, or you know or anything anyway so um we'll see if will they ever get to crack out I'm, I'm probably going to move into running the classic pirates of vistula um as you know as this goes on although there's still some loose ends from black madonna i might throw a few curveballs to the group um undecided as of yet but things should the world should move right things should happen so um so we'll see we'll see what uh, the ramifications of their little excursion to recover the Black Madonna might be. Um, they know the Pope is missing, um, and they have had an offer of a job to go help this guy get to the ruins of Warsaw up the Vist or down the Vistula. So, um, so we'll see how things go. They have some. Oh, and they still have the material from or the the stuff from Operation Reset. So it's very interesting. In the fourth edition, they have like a little snippet on how to start Operation Reset. It's a little different. Um, it's more city minded as opposed to like. An encounter out, in the, out on the road, which is how it starts um, in um, the Free City of Krakow book. So, um, so we'll see. We'll see how this things go and what they want to do with all the stuff that they're accumulating. Um, this the Free Krakow Coalition and uh, how faction play will go in the City of Krakow. So things seem kind of a, not a, a lull, peaceful now, but they're still. There's still like an idea of the like sort of the, the the mob, the merchant groups, and the mob in the city. Um, while they've neutralized the KGB, there's still right the rivalry between, um, and really it's not. It's interesting. It's not a rivalry between. I think on the soldier level, the soldiers and police force that work for the leader for the the self-styled uh, king of Krakow, and the commander of the of the Ormo, the command, the commander of the um, of the Polish force in there, which is pretty substantial. So they're cool with each other. It's just there's a rivalry between the king and the commander. So we'll see how that plays out too. Um, anyway, oh, the urban operations has some cool maps. It has some cool maps that can be used in an urban setting, um, and it has a map of Wawel, uh, Wawel Castle too, which is the castle, which is the seat of power in. In Krakow, so it's kind of nice. Anyway, um, yeah, sure. I don't know if I will just uh, release this as a single. I want to do some more things um, as well, but um, yeah, here it goes. That's it. Bye. <laughs>
by your voice recording at uh, geomologist at gmail.com. You could do that on the Discord too. Uh, I'm on various Discords. You can uh, direct message me, uh, leaving me uh, a voice recording. You can still leave a message on through Anchor, although you have to go to the website. You cannot do it directly from the app. And I do have a SpeakPipe account linked as well. I think it is in the overview of the podcast. I will probably start linking it for each show notes. I don't know if I did it the last time. Anyway, thank you guys so much for listening, and I'll catch you next time.